So occasionally I'll get asked questions that I feel like deserve an entire video, and one of those questions was, what do I think about LARBs? Now if you've read the title, then you probably can guess how I feel about it. So one thing I do want to get out of the way before I get into anything else is that this video, it's using LARBs as an example, but it's not really about why LARBs is bad. It's more about why I don't think you should be running a bootstrapping script in general. So if you're new to the channel, you know what to do, and let's jump right into it. So if you just happen to click this because you saw the weird logo on the thumbnail, maybe you don't know what LARBs is. So LARBs is a bootstrapping script for Arch Linux, Void Linux, I think that's all it's supporting right now, made by Luke Smith. And what a bootstrapping script is, will basically let you download a bunch of configs, a bunch of programs, and basically let you pretty much copy someone else's configuration onto your system. So this is really useful for a personal use case if you want to have, say, a laptop, and then you build a desktop or something, and you want to move all your configurations to your new system, and you want them all deployed, and you don't really want to think about it. A bootstrapping script is very, very useful from a personal use case. Now the problem that I start having is when you start looking at using other people's bootstrapping scripts. Now, if you really like LARBs, this video might not be for you. So, there are some people who I do think that LARBs does really make sense for. So, if you just want a quickly bootstrap system, then using LARBs or using mine or using literally anyone else's, if you just want something that works pretty much straight away, it's a really easy way to do it and you get to use Arch, you get to use Void, you get to use anything like that. For something like that, yeah, it makes perfect sense to use a bootstrapping script. Or if you just really love the maintainer. So if you really love Luke and you really love his configs, or you love me and my configs, or whoever, if that's your reason for doing it, that also makes perfect sense as well. Personally, I don't really see that, but if that's what you want to do, then it's your system, you're free to do whatever you want. But there's a lot of people where it really doesn't make sense to use LARBs, but I still see them using it. So there's a lot of people in my Discord who will frequently complain about things that are happening in LARBs, and I'm just thinking, why why don't you just go about this a completely different way? So why shouldn't you use a bootstrapping script, not just LARBs, but anything out there? So the first thing is you have to actually rely on the maintainer not to break something, and I know that I'm really bad for this. I will occasionally push changes up to my repo that are either broken, I didn't realize them, or they've changed something when I didn't mean to change it, or I push stuff up in multiple commits when it should have been one, or in one commit when it should have been multiple, and then because of that, it gets very difficult to jump between different versions. So if we just go back to the pull request for a second, you've gotta make sure that the maintainer is actually checking every single pull request, because some might come in, I'm not gonna say they might be malicious, some could be, but some people might be, I guess, trying to add features or remove features or change features in a slight way that slightly changes them, or they might submit pull requests that are slightly broken and break some other things. So you've gotta rely on the maintainer actually making sure that every single pull request they accept is actually gonna be a good thing for the code base in general. Now, obviously, this is the case for every single piece of software, but I don't think you should be doing your configs in this way. Now the next thing is you have to rely on the maintainer to not actually remove configs that you're using. So let's say for example that I moved from BSPWM to DWM and you're using my bootstrapping script. So because I've moved, there's no reason why I shouldn't delete my old configs. Now I'm not going to just in case I want to go back to it, but that doesn't mean that every single person who maintains a bootstrapping script is gonna do the same thing. You might have some that will actually delete the old configs. Now, at that point, you have to decide, do I want to migrate to the new tiling window manager or to the new software, whatever it is, or do I wanna fork the repo, or do I wanna go off and do my own thing? And if you just didn't have the problem of relying on a bootstrapping script in the first place, you wouldn't actually have this problem. So with the bootstrapping scripts that have multiple distros that are supported, so say with LARBs for example, so you've got I think Void and Arch are supported at this point, you've got to rely on the maintainer actually properly maintaining both versions. So for most things like your general configs, this isn't going to be a problem, but with programs they're installing and various other things that are very distro specific, it might be a problem between the different versions of the script. Now. This might not be a problem if the script is really popular, like LARBs for example, but if you're using a less popular one, then this could very well be a problem. And the next thing is that, like with the configs being deleted, the entire support for a single distro might be deleted. So if I write a bootstrapping script for Arch and then I decided to move over to Void, I could just delete the Arch version and if I don't need the Arch version, then what's the point of having it? 
And once again, like with the configs, at that point you have to decide, do I want to fork it? Do I want to go off and do my own thing? Do I want to move over? What is it that you want to do? And because you're relying on someone else's configs, then you have to make that decision at some point. Now, as you've probably noticed from the channel, I'm more of the hacky type, so I didn't actually use LARBs, but what I did is I actually did copy a lot of what Luke did. Now, the way I did this is a bit different. So what I did is that I copied in the blocks of code that I actually cared about into my config. So if you look at like my i3 configs, my ranger configs, a lot of the stuff that I was using back when I first started the channel, you'll notice that a lot of it looks very, very similar to what Luke has done. Now, the difference is that I didn't actually use LARBs to deploy it. Now, you might be saying, well, what's the point of that? If you're going to copy the stuff over, why don't you just deploy it with LARBs? And that might make sense for you. But for me, what I wanted to do is copy the stuff over that I thought I cared about. So if there's like a setting to move windows around or stuff like that, I'll copy that over. And then if I don't like it, I can just change it or delete it. Now, the good thing about doing it like this is that you still have a baseline to work from because I can understand that if you want to do something like configure i3, starting from a complete blank document might be a little bit intimidating. So it might make sense to actually start from working with someone else's configs. But if you copy the lines over and test it one by one or test it in groups, then you get more of an understanding of how it actually works. So if you want to then go and configure it a bit more, then you'll have a bit more of an understanding of how to actually do that. So now that you've got your configs that are based on my configs, on LARBs, on distrotubes configs, on whatever configs you want to base them on, maybe even want to start from a blank slate. What you can do now is make your own bootstrapping script. So the reason why you'd want to have your own script is that if you want to move to a new system, you can easily move all your configs and all your programs over to a new system. But the benefit you have now is that now you're the maintainer of the repo. So the reason why this is a good thing is that if you want to delete your configs, if you want to only support a certain distro, if you only want to support certain applications, if you even want to accept pull requests, or maybe you don't even want the repo to be public, this is now entirely in your control and you're not relying upon someone else to make these decisions for you. Now, in the end, couldn't you just copy all of LARBs onto your system and then make your own bootstrapping script? And yes, you could. But the reason I'd say that you shouldn't do this is the same reason why you shouldn't work from just a complete blank document for configuring. If you download something like LARBs, a lot of the configs are going to be very intimidating, about as intimidating as starting from a blank document because there's so much in there that you're going to look at it and say, unless you have a good understanding of how the application works, you're going to look at it and say, I have no idea where to even start with this, especially when you're looking at something like a Vim config, an i3 config, anything like that that can have hundreds of lines of configuration. So I would say it's still a better idea to actually copy the stuff over that you care about and then work from there. I guess to end off the video, I should probably mention the fact that I am slowly working my bootstrapping script. So it's not going to be anywhere near as complete as something like LARBs. So it's going to support Arch Linux because that's what I use. I'm going to download all of my configs, even the ones I don't really care about now, like my i3 and stuff like that, just in case I do have to test them out. So if you don't like that, then either write your own bootstrapping script or just download the configs manually like I would really recommend doing. As I've stated throughout this video, I don't think that you should run this script, but the reason I'm making this is actually, there's, there's two reasons for it. So one, I've had a few people ask for this. I'm not really sure why. You could just download them yourself and deploy them right now, but I guess some people want it. So the second reason is that I'm getting a new computer in the next few months, and really for me, that's the main reason I'm doing it. It'll just make it way easier for me to deploy my configs because the way that I do it is I have a repo and then I sim link stuff out of the repo. So because of that, it's just going to be way easier if I have a script that just does all of that for me. So because of that, that's basically why I'm doing it. But as I've said, it will be available to use. But if it breaks something or I change something you don't really like, then that's kind of on you for using it. So I think that's pretty much everything for this video. I don't know what my problem was this time, but for some reason, I struggled so much to make this video. So hopefully in the final version, it doesn't come off as terrible. The recording of it was a massive pain though, and I have no idea why. But anyway, if you like this video, then remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you want to see more videos like this, then remember to subscribe and ding the bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm now aiming for 10,000 subs and any help you really appreciate it. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist this video's in. So go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. 
Down below, I've got my social links, so it'll be like my Discord, my Telegram, and all of that sort of stuff. So go check that out if you want to chat with me or you want to get video updates. I've also got my support links down below. So if you'd like to support the channel, then I've got my Patreon and various other support links down there. So feel free to use any of those. But as always, if you don't want to support the channel, then you don't have to, but any help will be really appreciated. And lastly, I've got my alternate video platforms. So at this stage, that is my library and my BitTube. So feel free to check those out if you want to see my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. This video, for some reason, was a massive pain to record, and I'm out.